The 18th century is historically defined as a period stretching from the restoration of the British monarchy in 1660 until the French Revolution in 1789. Yet, as cultural influence rarely obeys the limitation of years, the 18th century at times extends beyond these bounds. This period of literature is particularly important to women writers because of the advent of the periodical press in the form of daily magazines and newspapers, which made publishing cheap, easy, quick, and anonymous. At once, a new and somewhat egalitarian venue was open to fresh voices. This seismic shift when it comes to the free circulation of ideas has only been exceeded by the creation of the internet. Yet there are still several barriers to women writing in the 18th century. Women were barred from universities, so the story of virtually every woman author in the period is one of self-education, courage, and extraordinary initiative. But the majority of these women writers were from wealthy families able to hire private tutors for their daughters, as well as shift the domestic duties that typically befell women onto their female servants. Even with such advantages, however, only one-third of women were literate in the 18th century, in contrast to 70% of men. In addition, women across all classes were legally bound to their husbands by the law of couverture, meaning to cover, which forced women to surrender their property and money to the sole possession of her husband upon marriage. Under this law, the husband also served as the legal representative of his wife, while the woman in question wasn't given the opportunity to represent her own interests publicly. In terms of culture, women writers also experienced a backlash to their publishing efforts. Women were expected to stay within the home, so publishing writing for a general audience was seen as indecent exposure of oneself to the public, on par with prostitution. It is no surprise that these early women writers earned themselves the deprecatory title of prostitutes of the pen. To many students, it may seem that women writers like Aqua Ben, whose work features in many British literature survey courses, have always been included in the 18th century canon, but this is not so. Indeed, it was through the women's liberation movements of the 1960s through the 1980s that opened up academia to female professors and scholars, who in turn open the literary canon up for the study of lesser known women writers. As such, this course will take a double-pronged approach to studying 18th century women writers by reading these primary works alongside scholarship produced by the 20th and 21st century feminists who study them. But, as with any relatively new field, the academic pioneers who started the study of 18th century women writers in the 1970s and 80s have become monolithic in their own right, much like the women writers who have been accepted into the literary canon. As we shall see, many of them carry troubling assumptions which are incongruent with our current cultural consciousness. Yet, their methodologies should still inform our approaches to widening the field of 18th century studies, Primarily, the reminder that one's material circumstances are intricately intertwined with the writing that one is able or unable to produce should be kept in mind, especially when it comes to understanding the paucity of 18th century women writers of color. The barriers of poverty, not to mention the dual oppression of bodily autonomy as a woman and as a slave or indentured servant, suppress the diversity of female voices beyond the white and wealthy. Some of these women writers of color, such as Phyllis Wheatley and Mary Prince, were promoted but also commodified and misappropriated by the 19th century abolitionist movement. But within the 18th century itself, one would be hard pressed to find a woman writer of color who was as widely read within Great Britain. However, that is not to say that 18th century women writers of color did not exist, but their contributions have yet to be canonized or even rediscovered, to borrow the problematic scholarly term. The literary canon is dictated by scholarship and the scholars who create it, and a new generation of scholars who are more diverse than ever are ascending in 18th century studies. Yet, this field is still relatively untrodden 
And furthermore, to know where we are going, we must see where we have been. This class only attempts to offer an introductory sampling of 18th century literature by British women writers. The literature we will read is by no means representative, and these gaps are not only acknowledged in this course, but will be readily exposed and open to contention in order to demonstrate poignantly what still needs to be done. For example, the first week's assigned readings have paired together Virginia Woolf's essay, A Room of One's Own, with an academic article by the prominent 18th century scholar Isabel Grundy. This pairing is meant to illustrate what a feat it was to be a published woman writer in the 18th century, and furthermore, emphasizes the important work that we still have to do as students and scholars to keep such work in circulation. Music